Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Talk Tales! And now our host, she's our very own kaleidoscope of talent! What? It's Kelly Clinton! Oh, wow! Thank you so much and welcome to Talk Tales on the Vegas Video Network. I am your host. My name is Kelly Clinton, hyphen Holmes. Thank you. That's where you go. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, today, uh, we have such a, a distinguished guest. Yes, yes, wow. <laughs> As if we don't have distinguished guests here. Uh, this is anyway. He is he. First of all, let me just say that he was the first American composer in 22 years to have three shows running simultaneously on Broadway a few years ago. So he's done a million things since then. He is a composer and a producer and songwriter. I mean, so many hit songs, so many hit musicals. Mr. Frank Wildhorn is here. Frank Wildhorn. Don't come over here yet. Scott, we forgot to give Frank that warning that we do where you say, when we say your name, don't run to the guest chair. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we got to remember to say that every time. But thank hey, you Frank, for being. Don't run to the guest thanks chair. for being anxious to be on the show. But before we get to meet Frank. Did he almost get up and go? He did. He did the uh, almost. <laughs> I love but he that. knew, he kind of felt like, this doesn't feel right, so maybe I'll. Thank goodness. Okay. Anyway, before we meet Frank, I have to introduce once again some of our, uh, the folks that are a part of the show, our family here on Talk Tales. We have, Frank doesn't know this because he, he's used to working big time with orchestras. He doesn't know we have an orchestra right here on Talk Tales. His name is Kenny Davidson. Oh. One person. Up with. You grew up with that yeah, song? Absolutely. What year did that song come out? I believe 87. Was it 88? 88. 88. 88. I was close. Big Whitney Houston hit. That's right. And it could be another hit for you, Kenny, who we call Bowtie Daddy here in the studio. You look sharp. Thank you. You got all kinds of shades of purple and blue. You got a big night tonight? I'm coming to the bootlegger tonight. Coming to, to the hang bootlegger. Out with you tonight. Yeah. I happen to host an open mic cabaret there every morning. What Monday a coincidence. Night. This is great. <laughs> and you know what? Frank Wildhorn is coming oh. tonight. So get ready. Get, you, get warmed up vocally. All right, Kenny. Good. Now I want to say hello to our producer, director, and founder of the Vegas Video Network, Mr. Scott Whitney. Hello, Scott. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Hello. What happened? Oh, are those the rose petals? Yeah. You know, I, I, one of your friends, one of your, you have, you know, you're nationwide. You're I have worldwide. one friend and they are here today. <laughs> They're they from roses. Russia. Well, Russia. they live in Russia. One of them lives in Russia, but he's, he's from uh, England. Oh, he's from England. Well, we're, that we're explains global. everything. We're global. But he, we are global. We're big time. But he right. gave me this beautiful rose, Stuart and, and Carol. Yes. And thank you. And all these rose petals that are decorating our set today. Hey, Scott. We spent the evening with them last Saturday, and those two are drinkers. Are they heavy drinkers? You, oh, man. So that, is that how they got turned on to talk tales? Uh, the let's, cocktail let's network? Yes, on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so another night of drinking we all experienced with a very <laughs> well-known drinker in town. We talked about the roast. Oh. Like crazy of Chris Phillips for, from Zoe Bowie. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yes, you and I, we, we, we collaborated and, uh, and, and we, we got much, much praise and great rea response to our bit. Well, let's just say this about that. We crushed it. We crushed it, <laughs> let's baby. Let's say this about that. There were two things on that roast that crushed it. It was you. And, and you, because we did it together. Clint. Clint Holmes yeah. did a parody, uh, two parody songs about Chris. They it. even printed the lyrics in the paper uh, yeah. yesterday. I yeah, yeah. So it was so much fun, and I hope Chris is okay. He's probably, uh, you know, getting therapy right now, <laughs> trying to find his confidence again. No, he's all right. He's got no liver for one thing, so he's, 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 <laughs> fine. he's fine. Do you feel at all responsible for that since you Not got him on the show and drank no. him? And no, no, him? no, no. Come on. All right, so what are we going to do? Are we going to do this? Hey, let's, let's, are we going to do this? You want to show them the video? Okay, yeah, the first let's time do it's it. been seen I outside of a dark, dark, dark room. Did you bleep, did you bleep out that word, that I bad word that I said? Word. All right, let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, how so do I set it up? We oh, can kind of set it up oh, a little bit. Oh, here we go. 
uh, Chris Zoe Bowie was the first and only host before I hosted this show. You put the show together with Chris because you're crazy party kids, <laughs> and uh, Chris is. He's, he's so many things, and he was so easy to poke fun and tease, but he's very famous for his tanning and his fake teeth and his big blonde hair. So we put together at and, the roast, and... And his women. And his young women, he dates younger women. Right. But the, the whole joke was that we were going to show some clips from his career on Talk Tales, and then we rolled Well, the, the Yeah, the opening clip is his last... His very last show, which got him fired, <laughs> and then we uh, we showed some clips from the past of him as well, which helped contribute to him getting fired. Yeah, that's why the spot opened up, and now I have <laughs> this but, great career. So this is it here. <laughs> and now a man whose pillowcases are made from Crown Royal velvet bags, Mr. Chris Phillips. to uh, talk tales on the, where are we, Scott? <laughs> on the Vegas v v Vagina Network. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Woo. My dream was to, <laughs> oh, uh, do I know you? Our guest today on the Vegas Video Network is uh, from, you might know them from, <laughs> The truth is, Scott, I forgot to get the guest. <laughs> Cannonball. Hey. <laughs> fake hair, fake teeth, fake tan. <laughs> By the way, Maverick Spirits, I'm not gay. I'm so not gay. I love... <laughs> What the hell is a maverick spirit? <laughs> Marley, are you back? Now, Robin, given your maverick girth, is there anyone you haven't slept with? Well, I never got to Catherine Hepburn, mm. which I would mm -hmm. love to have done. But you know, uh, we even did the Pope. Yeah, yeah, I get that. What would the Pope wear? Well, do you want him in the ordinary gear or in his party frock? I know that you're a happily married woman now, Loretta, but are there any sexual proclivities or encounters from the past that you're particularly proud of? Tell me. I got wow. to uh, open up for Barry Manilow. Can you wow! I thought he was gay like me. But what I really want to ask you is if I could just touch those buoyant, beautiful breastesses. Oh, I love boobies. <laughs> Kelly, being married to a blackish man when did you first realize that Clint was hung like a horse? Yes. On my front porch. Wow! Mayor Dinkins was there. Uh, Leslie, Leslie Brickus, Billy who wrote sure. Stop the World. Uh, yeah. Uh, Leslie Brickus was there. Who? Billy Stritch. Billy Stritch, uh, great pianist. It was, yeah, it was. And, and the funny thing is, uh, first, and the New York Times was there, right? It's time for us to say goodbye, but I, I don't want to put her on the spot, but I would love to have my leading lady, at least for now, until I blow it. <laughs> and uh, she's right here. Say hello to Lydia Ansel. Daddy-o, can you please button your shirt? It's so weird. Oh, they're so cute at this age. <laughs> You know.
you know, uh, these are the moments that mom, you know, is so <laughs> proud of me. <laughs> anyway, I was going to do this whole silly thing, but we need to move on quickly because we have, like I said, a respected gentleman <laughs> as our guest today, a multi-Grammy Award nominated, Tony Award nominated composer and producer, Frank Wildhorn, coming up on Talk Tales right after this. We'll be right one. Oh, I need to come up with something funny to Ouchie. say. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> but the co-host. Really, you? I have to say watch it. Well, we're, I'm doing. That's how you do it. You better really? watch it. There okay. you go. I got you. We? We're, we, we are the odds couple. Hi, my name is Scott Pritchard. And I am Anthony Padilla. You're watching the Vegas Video Network. You are. You are. We are too. Welcome back to Talk Tales. I am your host, or I am your old host. I'm not sure who I am right now. <laughs> Kelly Clinton hyphen Holmes, and I am joined by the great Frank Wildhorn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Frank, my goodness, let's wow. get yeah. First of all, I, <laughs> what you've just done for my career is. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I. I'm just thinking, though, with the acting, do you think possibly I could maybe make it into one of your big Broadway hits? You have so many. Yes, and you can do multiple characters. Right? So, I can uh, be Jekyll. You could be right? Jekyll done by Cher. I could be, oh my God, I'm going to kill everyone and make the potion. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means. But just think of, like, you know, this is the moment sung by Wayne oh. Newton. Oh, you know what? <laughs> this is the moment. This is the day. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Got, uh, there you go. All right, so you've just... <laughs> let's get back to you, Frank. You've just reopened Jekyll and Hyde on Broadway. I did. After how many years? We closed, we opened in 97, we closed in 2001, and uh -huh. here we are again. That's so they great. They can't keep us away. So, <laughs> now, what made you do the revival right now? I know you, you, you've been doing a big tour, mm -hmm. national tour, of Jekyll and Hyde. How did it come about? Well, the producers, the Needlelanders, who own most of the real estate in New York, they um, asked me to uh, do a revival of Jekyll and Hyde, uh, and I said no. I said, I'm way too young to do a revival. You can do that when I'm dead. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I will do a reimagined version of it. Okay. And so with director Jeff Calhoun uh -huh. and with stars Constantine Maroulis and Deborah Cox, new version, new energy. Jekyll's been a gift that has been giving for so many years, but this is for the next generation. So it's different musically or, or it's different the storyline? Because I didn't see the original one. I didn't have oh. the pleasure. I had never been to Broadway yet <laughs> that, at that okay. point. That's okay. Um, it, the story is the same. We've made changes in the structure to fit mm -hmm. the new generation. But, you know, I, I produce records, and my job to produce records is to frame the artist. Uh -huh. And so now we have new artists that sing very differently than what we had before. Yeah. So we've changed the orchestrations and the arrangements, and we tried to frame them as best as we could. So Constantine, Constantine. is... is Famous first from American Idol. American Idol, yeah. And Bohemian did, Rhapsody. Yes. Killed that. Oh yeah. He's yeah. He's got this crazy range. Yes. And I asked you last night because we're friends and we all had dinner. I asked you how does he? <laughs> <laughs> how does he keep up vocally with that? I mean, he's he's he's, he's got amazing. pipes of steel. Yeah. But you know you. You're married to a guy with pipes I, of steel. I am married so. to a guy with pi pipes of steel. Yeah, there he is. They're showing clips right now. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. So, and we had the pleasure of <laughs> we had the pleasure of seeing the the new version. But we were in L.A. Mm -hmm, that's right. And and you were you were doing the tour of it, getting ready for Broadway. Yes. And and Deborah Cox. Unbelievable. Yes. Gorgeous voice, powerful, sexy, beautiful it, actress. I know it's so Gorgeous. annoying. That's so <laughs> annoying. Yes. She now she was a, a, a record hit maker, right? Very much so. She had a few hits. Back big hits and big dance queen and during the yeah. disco kind of dance. Still queen. does. She still does. Yeah. yeah. And she is gorgeous. She's gorgeous. First time doing a musical theater for her? First time kind of creating a character. She uh -huh. came into Aida when it was running at oh. John's Aida. But this is a new experience for her and she's been a great trooper. She is stunning. Yes. And her, another voice that's 
just unbreakable, huh? Yes. Well, these are hard songs to sing and to do them eight times a week. Who wrote these songs? I don't know. Some guy, <laughs> my guy in Jersey. I tell you, you know. Some guy in Jersey. <laughs> now, when you first started out, mm -hmm. you were writing for, for, the, for the record industry, right? Yes. That was your main deal. Were you ever a singer? A very bad one. <laughs> Did you ever want to be I sing a singer? With, yes, all I wanted to be is a singer, yeah. except for middle linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> That's what I really wanted to be. That's my passion. Did you go for it with the, with with the, the football? football? Yeah. Yeah, but after a few games, I, I woke up one morning and I realized I was still Jewish, and that was not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it was a, every day. So, it was time for another dream. <laughs> And the music was, you know, I love the music, and uh, it's taken me so many wonderful places. When did you start writing songs? I think the first time my hands hit a piano, which was, I was 15 years old in Hollywood, Florida. Uh -huh. I think that day I started writing. I really do. I, I'm, I'm self-taught. I still That's don't quite know what I'm doing, even now. So I, I just wow. think I was writing from the day I started playing. Does that shock you, Kenny? That he was self-taught, and, and so you never took lessons, or did you take him later? No, I never took lessons. No. I just tried always in my career to hang out with musicians who were more knowledgeable, more savvy, knew more than I did, and they're mm -hmm. my teachers over the years. And I've been lucky to hang out with some pretty great musicians. So. I would say so. So it eventually led to, God, there's so many questions I want to ask you. You were 15 at the time when you started. Mm -hmm. By the time you were in your early 20s, you mm -hmm. already had some major things going on. Were yeah. you out playing? I was out playing. With you bands? Know, I, uh, yeah, I mean, in Hollywood, Florida. And in the late 70s, uh, Florida was such a great place to be a musician mm -hmm. because on both coasts you could play up and down the coasts. Mm -hmm. And I'd play, you know, jazz a couple nights, funk a couple nights, salsa with the University of Miami, and every kind of music you can imagine. And then I went to the University of Southern California at USC in LA. And so then I continued there and I got my first publishing deal while I was a student at USC. And I think uh, it was 1981, my first hit was with a girl named Stacy Lattice called We Can Make Miracles Together. Yes. So. Wow. So how did, how did you get the, 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 the publishing deal though? That wasn't easy. I mean, things are different now, but back yes. then that was a big, Tough well, thing to it was. hurdle to overcome. At USC, I did shows. I had shows that I wrote. And um, the publishers in Los Angeles would come to the shows. And they would say, you know, you have a flair for melody and a flair for pop sensibility. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to get your heart broken doing theater? <laughs> you know, do you know? And so I got my first offer for my first publishing deal, and off we went. Wow! But I always had that love for theater. Mm -hmm. So when things were right, I went back and stumbled back into it. So you're saying, because I don't know this, I didn't know that you wrote uh, plays or or musicals mm -hmm. before you had hit records. Yeah, they were awful. I thought it went. Were they awful? Yeah, yeah. I wrote the book, Can't the music, and lyrics, and. They were the first, the big one that I did was at USC. It was called Christopher. And um, it was kind of like Jesus Christ Superstar Part 8 from a Zen Buddhist point of view. <laughs> well, I, for one, would love to see it. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll tell you, the guy who played Christopher was a guy named Chuck Wagner, uh -huh. who was taken out of the play to play one of the princes in Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods. Wow. And the girl who played the lead, her name was Madeline Smith, she was also taken out of my play to playing? play John Travolta's girlfriend in Urban Cowboy, oh. the beautiful br oh. brunette. So all three of us from that, that little oh, USC mafia was, was cool. They came to see your, your play. Yeah, yeah. So you, you made stars. Well, I mean, you've made many stars, I but way back then. We helped. We opened the doors. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so... The part about getting your heart broken by, th by theater. Yes. It's it's a tough place. Oof. And you've had I'm like I uh, earlier I said three shows running simultaneously. You've mm -hmm. had many, mm -hmm. but three at one point that was what, what year was that? Ninety nine, two thousand. Uh, yeah. Had Jekyll and Hyde and the Scarlet Pimpernel and Civil, Civil War. War. And it was a very crazy time. <laughs> were you just running down the street to the different places? I, I, out I, I, I was. You were. That's exactly you? what I was doing. And, and, you know, they have the police in front of different shows. So I became friends with all the cops in New York. So I was able to park my car in front of the theater, <laughs> which you're not allowed to do. And I would invite them and their families, you know, to the show and stuff. And they took good care of me. And for a little while, you know, you felt like you owned the place. It was well, yeah, very crazy. So you were embraced by Broadway. 
And at the same time, when you're that successful, you get picked on a lot. Ooh, very much right? so. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, you're, look, you step into the ring. Mm -hmm. You're a gladiator. And right. if you're going to do that, then you give them the opportunity to throw things at you. Yeah. And they will do that, you know. And I came from the pop world, you know, and I am right. a self-taught musician, and they knew that. And I was interested in sports and girls <laughs> and things like that. That's where you went wrong. And, and I don't know if I was ever made for Broadway, but um, the fact of the matter is, look, at, at the end of the day, I still, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I mean, you know. Yeah, but we, you're, we just you're opened Jekyll. You're extremely talented again, guy. So. You just opened it again. Again, that's my eighth opening. So, you know, we, we've done a lot yeah. and we have a lot around the world and it all starts because we sit at a piano, you know. And, and you were, um, I, I remember a couple of years ago when you were nominated for Tony, mm -hmm. you were in the audience and of course they go to all the, the nominees, right? Yes. And and then you talk to mom after. Yes, and I lost She's again. Lost. <laughs> well, you didn't lose because mm. like, like Clint says about records, well, how many have you had? I've never been nominated. So <laughs> this is a big thing, but you talk to your mom after mm -hmm. and she's your toughest critic, isn't she? Most of the time. What did she say? <laughs> She'll say... No, well, on this one. See, on he, which one? You know what I'm talking about, Clint. Where you say, I don't you know, know. What? here I am nominated for a Tony, right? Yes. And, and what you did know, she my say? Mom, she called you after and said, I think you're putting on weight. Oh. <laughs> 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 I, I thought you, you were talking about us. music. No. <laughs> whoa, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. So you have all these hits on Broadway. But Thank you're, you, darling. You're so Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up, Kel. We'll have dinner again soon. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, you're successful all over the world, right? Well, you know, I, again, coming from pop music, the world is your stage. And I grew up like that. And most Broadway composers, they think the world is six blocks in New York City. Mm -hmm. Everything else doesn't really matter too much. It's mm -hmm. the truth. But I come from a different place. It's all about international. It's all about the world. And it's, it's made life so rich and given me so many wonderful experiences. Now, you're, you're doing something in, in Japan? Or many things in, in Japan. But <laughs> yes. first, I, I was fascinated by this, that you have done a lot of, many of your productions. I, I'm, I just, this caught my eye. Okay. Civil War, Bonnie and Clyde, Camille Claudel, Carmen, The Count of Monte Cristo, Cyrano de Bergerac, and that's just some mm. of them. You're amazing, <laughs> prolific. Um, do you take some of these these shows and you do them in Asia and Japan? And yes, so you, so some of them have been commissions from right. overseas. I have like a, an Asian family and a, and a European family and then what we do here. So, so you're not Jewish? Well, I'm still <laughs> Jewish, you know. <laughs> but you have the actors, the famous actors mm -hmm. from there Absolutely. playing the roles. Absolutely. And it's, it's great. And, you, you know, music like love knows yeah. no borders. That's right. How do you, how do you, do you understand uh, when you're, do you hold the auditions or are you? I'm, I'm involved because I have a final say of who plays the leads. But we work with translators around the world. Right. So, you know, imagine doing share in Japanese. I, I actually can't even do something right now without, <laughs> without offending someone. <laughs> I can't do it. But it's great. It's all an adventure. It's just, you know, you wake up and the phone rings and you don't know where you're going next. And it's been great. And you love that part, don't I you? I love that part. You Absolutely. just did, a, you just did a, a weekend at the Smith Center at Fantastic. Cabaret Jazz yes. called Frank and Friends. Yes, two friends. Friends. My only two friends. Your only two friends. <laughs> and those two friends are? Your husband. Clint Holmes. Clint Holmes and Jane Monheim. Jane Monheim. Great jazz singer. Beautiful. And it was an amazing two days. Yeah. We filmed it and I, I think it's, it's Frank and Friends, but it's really the three of us with incredible musicians. Vegas has yeah. such great musicians. And we had a great time. I think the audience loved it. We were well reviewed from what I understand. Yes. And uh, I hope they'll have us back again. And they're singing your music from all the different shows. Yeah. Well, those, different that's shows. the only music I know how to play. So yeah, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but what's great is you, you're, you're at the helm. You're, you're telling us some of the stories mm -hmm. about the shows mm -hmm. and some of the experiences. You t told a story about uh, Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews, yeah. Well, Victor Victoria, 
you know, um, my partner Leslie Brickus wrote that uh, the film with the late great Henry Mancini. They yeah. both won the Academy Award for it. Uh -huh. But Henry Mancini, unfortunately, he passed away when they were working mm -hmm. on the show. So for some strange reason, they asked me to finish it. And I did. And wow. It was an amazing experience. And the, the story I tell, which is a true story, is she called me to ask me to, to do that. And I didn't believe it was her. I thought it was somebody playing a trick. So I hung <laughs> up on her. <laughs> and then she called back 10 minutes later. And uh, she said, please don't hang up. And and then we, we started working, and I mean, that was my first wow. experience. So. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And that was the, fir the start of, of your writing for Broadway? Yeah, that was my first one. And, and uh, s the same time, almost around the same time with Julie, was also when I taught Sammy Davis Jr., This is the Moment, and Liza Minnelli, A New Life. Oh my so goodness. we had Sammy Davis, Liza, and Julie all debuting new songs of mine in the same period it was wow it was crazy oh my goodness <laughs> we have a live chat question scott yeah they want to know that video that you shot at smith center what's that going to be used for <laughs> do we know it's a pbs it's it was it's shot PBS? by pbs oh, yes. and yes. and i think it's going to find a nice little life both yes. as a tv show and god knows what else will be on the internet from it i mean because they didn't do just a show they did interviews with all of us yeah so you know. It was exciting because great. The, the room is beautiful already, and and they had the, the jib cameras and, mm -hmm. and all of that. They had like four or five camera, five camera shoot, mm -hmm. six camera shoot. I was just, yeah, I have a, a living prompter out ah, there in the audience. <laughs> and it was, it was really exciting. It was, it was great. It was great. Gorgeous. And the fans were great. I mean, you know, they came. You were there. I was there. I'll so always be there. How did they respond? They were, actually, it was fun watching the audience mm -hmm. watch the show and react. They were flabbergasted. They were blown away. There were several standing ovations and yeah. several looking at each other going, oh, my God. But what's so cool about that, and it's such a tribute to Clint and Jane, is those songs, most of them, they don't know those songs going into the night. Mm -hmm. Some are from my pop catalog, some from the jazz catalog. Mm -hmm. So you're throwing almost two hours of new mm -hmm. music. And, you know, that's, uh, that's a tough thing to do. And they're not easy songs. They're not easy songs. And also, the, like I said, the, they're new to these people. Right. And yet, I think they were with us and got the lyrics. And, you know, it was, it was a oh, really yeah. cool night. And Jane... I mean, I can't say enough about Clint. I mean, I'm, 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 his big, I'm your biggest fan, Clint Holmes. And he was unbelievable. I thought I was his biggest fan. Well, you know, you know. when you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> but Jane Monheit and, and Clint just, is Great. just blown away by her, too. What a voice. Unbelievable. I, always, I say, and I say it at the show, you know, you know, it's like what happens when real life is almost better than the fantasy. And the fantasy you have when you write the song, uh -huh. and then when you work with singers like that, and they bring the songs to life in a way like that, you just oh yeah, that's amazing. There, there were entertainers in the audience saying they were going to quit the business. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so perfect. It was a, it was like a record. Every song was a, was a, like a perfect recording. Well, I think it will be a record because yeah. we recorded it. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> see how smart are you? <laughs> But, um, gosh, I don't want to go to the end of the show yet. I want to ask more stuff. So we have a little more time, Scott? Sure. We do? Okay. Tell us about one of the, my favorite songs that Clint did was Sarah. Yes. From the, the Civil War. Tell me about that. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I love to talk about the Civil War and that mm -hmm. show and the mm -hmm. songs. But then sometimes people get so sad, you know, and I, I'm trying to figure out how to, way to talk oh. about it with, with a smile. But, no, you know. it's okay. It, it doesn't have to be all chuckles, giggles, and chuckles. You know, this is, it's beautiful. Well, and Clint does an amazing job. It's, the song is called Sarah. Mm -hmm. It was written by a guy named Sullivan Ballou. He was an officer in, in, at Gettysburg. He got shot, and he died that day. But before he died, he wrote his, his sweetheart a letter. And we took that letter, and we kind of paraphrased the lyrics and came up with the song Sarah, which mm. if I remember somebody said in the paper today, Clint left them breathless singing it, which I thought was a pretty cool thing to say. No, and the other part of the story is you said that when, when they would go into war at that time, right, mm -hmm. if they got shot they were gone. in the stomach, they were Done. gone so they would carry yes. paper and pencil. The Civil War is the only war, first of all, it was before the army censored anything. 
so everybody was free to write home whatever they wanted mm -hmm. to write mm. and and they did and and those letters and diaries really became the base for what we did on when we did the show mm -hmm. so beautiful thank you and um, 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 tell me about um, Bonnie and Clyde Bonnie and Clyde was on Broadway last year and um, this year it's been in Japan mm -hmm. and it opens this summer in South Korea and next year in Germany and Bonnie and Clyde, I mean, you know, from Texas, mm -hmm. it's the Dust Bowl. It's two reckless kids trying to get out during tough times. And, you know, during tough times, kids do stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and this got out of hand. But they were really just two kids trying to get away, you know, and get a better life. Made a lot of mistakes and that cost them their lives. So, of course, it's a musical. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to music. Um, all, I wanted to, uh, um, I'm doing the fan thing right now. I'm getting all excited. But uh -huh. when you write, mm -hmm. there, there's so, some of your shows are, are based uh, out of uh, the book, out of books, books. Uh, stories. So are, are you an avid reader and then, then you're reading and you say, I can, I can make this. Is I, that how the, you make that decision? Sometimes, yeah. I am an avid reader and I'm a history major. And I, I love great literature because mm -hmm. great literature you could keep reinventing. You know, uh, uh, Leslie Brickus and I wrote Cyrano, uh -huh. my favorite play. Mm -hmm. But the reason it happened is because I was watching with my son uh, Steve Martin's movie Roxanne. Uh -huh. Remember that movie? Yes, right? of course. And so while my son and I are watching it, I said to him, you know, this is based on a pretty famous play. You know, called Cyrano, and he didn't know the play. Right. And I said, Oh yeah, yeah, I gotta write this now. <laughs> so I try to take those classics, but write them in a musical vocabulary mm -hmm. that young people will get. Beautiful, so. beautiful. So you did this for your son. I did. There, for my son. Um, there are so many. You've had a lot of hit records too, like you said, pop mm -hmm. on the pop charts. And um, when you're writing that from there, because mm -hmm. you're writing from a different place. Very different. Right. Are you writing? to make the hit, or are you writing for the person, or are you writing for yourself? A little of both, all of the above. All of the above. But the fact of the matter is I hear a voice, mm -hmm. I study that voice. What intervals do they sing best? What right. vowels do they like to sing? Mm -hmm. What is their range, mm -hmm. you know, their feel, their phrasing? And then I try to write for that voice, so. So did that happen when you were introduced to Whitney Houston. It did. Voice? I, I was, yes, and it was a young Whitney Houston, yeah. and she was so beautiful. Yes. And her eyes were just so full of light. They really were. It was sad because 15 years later I saw her again, and those same eyes didn't have that light. And it's yeah. so sad and so tragic that we lost one of the great voices to me ever. Major. Unbelievable. Major loss. But I was lucky enough to have some time with her, at probably at the best at time. At the best time. Best time. And you know, we, we wrote a little song for her. And I love this song. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. Because Frank said, what do you mean I'm playing or singing? And I was going to make you sing it. No, you were not. That's not I was happen. trying to make you sing it. <laughs> so will you, will you play it for us? And then I'll see if there's a boy singer that's in the <laughs> audience, another boy singer. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to impose on Clint a little bit. Right. And he just got off the tennis court. He did. Literally got off the tennis court. He was court, giving so. Agassiz a lesson, I think. Let's do it. So I hope, Kenny, you're all right with okay. that. Turning the chair over to Frank Wildhorn. Yeah, here? Okay. All right, come on over, honey. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I totally apologize for the way I look. Uh, no, you and your pal have caps on. I got even at my sun. I'm looking at my. I got my sunglasses. Up there. Good Lord. <laughs> Hi, Frank. I, we we had such a great weekend. It, it, it was it, it was stunning. He writes great music, obviously. Sure does. But what what I love about his music is, is that it crosses. It, it crosses um, musical boundaries, mm -hmm. um, and some of it is as deep as Sarah, as as, yeah. as you talked about, and some of it is, is as funny as uh, a song we do called um, that he wrote called Mad Hatter, oh, which is tongue in cheek it. and funny yeah. and nasty and and, <laughs> and fast and furious. It's amazing that that you know Jane and I talked about this. That you you do almost two hours of music, different music at every mm -hmm. turn, and he wrote all of it. I know it's you know? amazing. Can I ask him one question, honey? Absolutely. It's based on Go a question ahead, that, that you, uh, you, ahead, you, you started. Um, is it lonely when you write? I mean, what, is it, a, is it a, a, a joyful thing when you're sitting at the piano alone and there's nothing else? Or is it a lonely thing? It's joyful. It's joyful. It's therapy. Uh -huh. It's wonderful. Well, that's what you guys talked it's about, what, how optimistic you are. It's also, joyful. it's like, right. it's not the, it's, 
it's what I would do if I wanted to have the most fun by myself that I could have. Right. Uh -huh. So I would do it anyway. You know right. what I mean? It is so relaxing. It's the rest of the stuff that's hard. Yeah, it's when you finish <laughs> it. Yeah, it's, 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 what do you think? Everything after the fact and stuff is, is hard, especially in the theater world. But, yeah. you know, to write for you and then for you to do what you do, well, I mean, come on. Doesn't get better than that. So, so, so what am I saying? So one of my favorite tunes that you did was the the song that you had a big hit with Whitney Houston. Right. Where do broken hearts go? Well, and I'm not saying the whole thing. Oh, no, no, we're we'll just do, do a, a verse. First of all, I don't even have the music in front okay, of me, good, yeah. so this could be very embarrassing. So. Well, I know it's been some time. But there's something on my mind You see, I haven't been the same Since that cold November day We said we needed space But all I found was an empty place And the only thing I learned Is that I need you desperately an honor and a pleasure. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. A lot of and, fun. Uh, I'd love to be in one of your shows. We'll see you next time <laughs> on Talk Tales. <laughs> Can you noodle on it? Can you noodle? Just noodle. Thank you. Thank you, Scott Whitney and Jacob Cannon and, of course, Bowtie Daddy, Kenny Davidson. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Woo! That, that was, was very great. cool. Really cool. So good. Thank you, honey, for 